Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Let's do coding. In last video, we learned about variables and its types in JavaScript. We also learned about primitive data types in JavaScript in our last video. In today's video, we will explore more on reference data types in JavaScript, which are arrays and objects. To allow more complex programming, objects and arrays can contain multiple values. We can think of objects as a collection of properties and methods. Properties can be thought of as variables. They can be primitive data types such as number or string, but can be other objects as well. Methods perform actions. Methods contain a certain number of lines of code that will be executed when the methods get called. We will learn about methods in detail in upcoming videos. Let's start by learning about arrays, which allows us to store multiple values. Arrays are like lists. We can use arrays of items to buy items at the grocery store, which can contain values like apple, banana, milk, and bread. So let's see how we can create arrays. To declare an array, we use the square bracket. Let's use square bracket to define an array and populate some values in it. Let sample array is equals to, and we will create an array of colors. So let me put some colors in this array. So now we have a sample array, which contains three different colors. Now this sample array contains objects or contains items which are all of same type that is string. But we can also define an array to hold different types. JavaScript simply stores all the variables with their own data type and values in the array. So let's see how it does. Let's define an array which will, we will call mixed array. And it will contain high there, then a number and a boolean. Our next thing we will do is we will print the type of all the items in the array. So let's do that for all the four items we have in array. By changing the index number, we will be able to access the item of the array. An array starts with zeroth position of an index. So that's why to access the first value, we use the zero as index. So let's see, let's save this and see what output we do get. So you can see we are getting two string, one number and one boolean. And that's what our array is. It contains two string, one number and one boolean. Now what happens if we use the const keyword to declare the array instead of let? Well, we can change the value of a constant array, but we cannot change the array itself. Let's see, if I define an array, with the keyword with the keyword const instead of let and we try to change an array element in that and if i do a console log of that you see the new value as we have we have changed the high there with the new value but what happens if I go ahead and I try to change the array itself? As you can see, you will get an error saying that assignment to a constant variable. So that means we can change the element inside the array if it is defined with a const keyword, but we cannot change the array itself. JavaScript assigns an index to every value of the array. The first value is assigned the position of 0, the second 1, the 
third, two, and so on. To call a specific value based on its position in the array, we use the name of the array, add square bracket to the end, put the index we want to access between the square brackets. So let's see that in action. Let's define an array of cars containing three cars, Toyota, Renault, and Volkswagen. Now to access the car at the zeroth position or at the first position, we'll use the index zero to access the first element of the array. Similarly, we can use the index one to access the second element in the array. And we can use the index two to access the third element of the car array. So if I save this and we go ahead and we try to see this, you can see at the first, we got Toyota, second, we got Renault, and third, we got Volkswagen. But what would happen if we, if we use a negative index or an index higher than the number of value array has? Let's try to use the index minus one on the array, as well as we will try to use the index three, which is beyond the length of the array at the moment, because array, because our car array contains only three elements at the moment. So we do not have anything on the third index, that is the fourth position. So if we go ahead and save this and try to see it, if we try to see this in browser console, we do get the three values of the car array, but for negative one and third index, we are not getting any values. That's because in the array, there is no value at the minus one index. Similarly, on the third index, we do not have any value in the car array. That's why JavaScript doesn't throw any error but it simply says that value is undefined. The elements in an array can be overwritten easily. To overwrite, simply access the element using index and assign a new value. So if we want to change the Toyota value to Tesla, all I have to do is take the index of Toyota and assign the value Tesla to it. Now, if we do console log of the arrays, we'll find that we have changed the value of Toyota to Tesla. See? Array also has a very useful built-in property, which is called length. This will return the number of values that array has. So if I try to do a console log of car dot length, it will tell me how many objects, it will tell me how many items or how many values the array has. As of now, the array has three values. What if we go ahead and we add another one. Let me add Kia to it. Let's save it and now since there are four items in the array, the console.log should print four. Similarly, we can define colors array, boolean array and also an empty array. A colors array contains three colors. A boolean array contains true and false randomly and an empty array doesn't contain anything. So if we try to print the length of each the array, the first one will, the first color array would print out three, the booleans would print out four, and the empty array, which doesn't have any items in it, would print zero. So let's save this one and go and see, and you can see the colors array has three items in it, booleans has four, and the empty array is like empty, so it has zero. So we see that length is one higher than the maximum index because index of the array starts with zero. So we can use the length property
to access the last element of the array like last element let me define it let last element equals to cur color and then we take the length and we subtract one out of it so we can access the pink out of it so let's go ahead and try to print the last element and see are we getting pink or not similar to length property array has built-in functions as well to add a new item into the array we use push function let's define a favorite fruits array in which we have apple orange and banana the next thing we will do is we will try to console log the favorite fruits we can see there are three items in the array now what if we want to add another item in our favorite fruit list all we have to do is take the reference of the array call the push function and put the item which we want to add to our list and then we will console log the favorite fruit list let's save this and see if the kiwi got added to our list or not as you can see now we have the kiwi at the fourth position that is the third index add the value at the end of the array what if we want to add an element at a certain index we can use splice method to do this let's define an array of shapes Let's add square and trapezoid to the array of shapes at second index. Let's see if we are able to add the square and the trapezoid at the second index or not. So as you can see in our original array, we had circle, triangle, rectangle, and then pentagon. But the modified array now contains square and trapezoid in between triangle and rectangle. The splice method takes multiple parameters. The first parameter is the index of the array on which we want to start inserting, which is in our case is 2. The second parameter 0 in our case is the number of elements we want to delete starting at our previously defined starting index. The parameters after these first two are square and trapezoid. The parameter after these first two should be whatever needs to be inserted after the starting index. So if we do splice and instead of deleting zero elements, we delete two elements, then splice will remove rectangle and pentagon from the array and will replace square and trapezoid in their place let's see as you can see now circle triangle square and trapezoid and rectangle and pentagon have been replaced we can also add another array to our array this can be done with the concat method this way we can create a new array that consists of concatenation of both the array. For the elements of the first array will be the first and the elements of the arguments of concat will be concatenated to the end. Here I have an array which is called array 5 which contains 1, 2, 3 as its element and array 6 contains 4, 5, 6. We create a new array called array 6, which is the result of concatenating array 5 with array 6. As we try to print the array 7 in console, we can see it will be a combination of 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. As you can see, as expected, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can even add values directly using concat. We can add single value or we can use comma separated multiple values. I have declared an array 8 in which I'm creating a new array using array 7 and then we, I'm concatenating three values 
to the existing array 7 and creating the array 8 out of it. Now if we see what we get is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and these 3 values were the ones which I provided in the concat method. Now let's see how we can delete array elements. Removing the last element is done with the pop method. Here I have declared an array which consists of 9 elements. And then we are popping one element out of it which will be the ninth or the last element. After that we are trying to print the array again. Let's see what is the output. As you can see 9 has been popped out of the array and now we are left with 8 elements. How about removing from middle? Remember the splice method we used? We can use that to specify the index from where we want to delete the elements. Let's use the splice method on our array 8 and in this case we will be starting with first index and then we will be removing 3 elements out of it. Let's save it and see what has happened. So as you can see we have removed starting with the first index that is the second position we have removed 2, 3 and 4 out of it and all we have is like 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in the array. If we want to check whether a value is present in an array we can use the find method. Find method will be executed on every element in the array until it finds the match. If it does not then it returns undefined. Here is a simple code snippet to do that. Do not worry about the details as it will become more clear once we start learning about functions. Here I have defined an array 8 which consists of 4 elements in it and then I am defining a variable called find value in which I am calling the find method of on array and I am checking whether the array element is equal to 6 or not. Similarly for find value 2 I am checking whether the array contains value 10 or not and then I am simply printing them. As you would have expected 6 is there so the find value is true and the find value 2. As you expected since 6 is there in the array we would get a match for that whereas 10 is not a part of the array and we would get undefined for that. Often you don't just want to find the element but the location of element. That can be done by using index of method. This method returns the index on which the value was found. If there are more than one occurrences then it returns the first occurrence. If the value is not found then it returns minus one. In the following snippet we are trying to run index of method and we are trying to see if six and 10 are part of the array 8 or not. And this will give us the index of 6 and 10 in the existing array. As you can see, we have got 1 and minus 1. So 1 means it found the index of 6 at the first position, whereas minus 1 means it didn't find 10 in the given array. Index of takes another parameter to specify from where the searching should start. In the next line, I have notified the in the next line I have notified that it should start with second index and it should look for six. And as you know, from if we start from the second index, that is from the third position, we will not get the six value. And in this case, find index will return minus one to us. Similarly, the last occurrence can also be found using last index of method. Here I have an animal array which contains dog at two positions. So if we try to find the last index of dog, we just call last index of and then provide the element for which we are looking for the index. And this should give me 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Let's save it and try to see what value we are getting. As expected it is giving me 4. 
there is also a built-in method for sorting the array. It sorts number from small to high and string from A to Z. Here I have an array names which contains five random names and they are randomly inserted. All I want to do is sort them alphabetically. So we just call the sort method on the array and then we print the array again. And as we can see, it has been sorted in alphabetical order. For number, it is sorting them in ascending order. Let's create a number array and try to sort that. As you can see, the numbers have been sorted in increasing order. Similarly, the element of the arrays can be reversed by simply calling a reverse method on the array. Let's try that. Here I have again a names array which contains five names in it and I am calling a reverse method on it. Let's print them in reverse order. As you can see, it now prints Bert, Maria, Fatiha, Alicia and Jane. Whereas originally it was James, Alicia, Fatia, Maria, and Bert. Now, as we are comfortable with arrays, we will now see how we can create arrays of arrays. In simple word, we can call it a list of list. Let's define three arrays, just simple one dimensional array. And we will try to create two dimensional array using these three values. To create an array of arrays, we will create an array and we will use the arrays as the items for the parent array. This way, we will be creating a two dimensional array. Another simple way of creating two dimensional array is using the array notation and then populating each item as an array. To access the element of the inner array, we will have to specify an index twice. So to get the value, To get the value of the first array, second object, that is 2, we will have to specify that we have to first grab first array in the array of array and then we are looking for the second array element in that array. So let's try to print that. And as expected, it's printing 2 because that's what we wanted. So today we learned a lot. We learned about arrays and its inbuilt methods. And also we learned about creating arrays of arrays or simply we can say two dimensional arrays. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked the video and I'll see you folks in next video with objects and its secrets.